All right, before you get too comfortable, would you stand with me? I'm going to read a passage of our scripture today from Matthew chapter 13. And this, of course, is if you're able, it's okay. If you're not, you'll be able to follow along. I'm going to read the beginning of the chapter, which I read last week. But this gets us ready for where we'll pick up and and run ahead today. So Matthew chapter 13, I'll read verses 1 to 17. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And great crowds gathered about him so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. He told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. When the disciples came, they said to Jesus, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to the one who has, more will be given, for he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled. It says, you will indeed hear, but never understand. You will indeed see, but never perceive. For these people's heart has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they've closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart in turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For truly I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear, and did not hear it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, we pray today that you would uh, speak to us in a similar way to this parable, that you would sow the good seed of the word over us and into us. We pray that you would give us ears to hear, uh, that you would let us know you and turn to you and be healed by you. And may we find, Lord, that we walk out of here even today in an abundance of fruit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, have a seat. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Thanks for uh, giving time to listen to the Word today. So I want to remind you, in case you weren't here last week, that I made a big deal of uh, some stuff that happened in chapter 12, so that at the beginning of 13, which is a, a chapter largely made up of parables, that we would understand the context. In chapter 13, verse 1, that I read for us, that same day, Jesus went out of the house, sat beside the sea, gathered the people, began to teach, and he began to speak in parables. It was the very same day where in chapter 12, he's got several confrontations, and he is is really bringing people to a point of, of decision or commitment about him and about the kingdom of God. It's very much... Uh, as I said last week, kind of hanging in the air that there are some questions. And so when he tells his stories, they're meant to kind of cut through that air and and to kind of cut into the middle of those questions. Those questions are very important. They're the big questions like, are you in the kingdom of God or are you in the kingdom of the devil? Are you with me or are you against me? Do you receive me, Jesus? Do you receive the kingdom? Or do you reject it? These are the questions that are hanging in the air when he launches into these parables. Sometimes parables are real short. They're little word pictures. There's different things that uh, he uses them in different ways. About a third of his teachings are actually in parables in the Gospels. So it's a, it's a big group. So Jesus used parables a lot. This first one, I think, sets up the whole chapter And the rest of those, which we, uh, Lord willing, hope to cover in the next few weeks, 
will walk through these little parables that Jesus told. And you will see a pattern in those stories because he will start each story with this phrase. You know, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, like, and then he'll kind of launch into this little parable word picture of what the kingdom of heaven is like. And when he launches those into this air, it's as if to say, do you see it or not? Do you receive it or not? His kingdom is different maybe than the kingdom that you've been in. Do you want in to this kingdom? That's the context of these stories. So you can see why this first parable about the soils kind of sets up the context for how we actually listen to the stories of Jesus, to the word of Jesus, to the announcement of the kingdom. It hits all of us in different ways. It's the same seed that's hitting everyone, but the receptivity of the heart is different for each hearer. That's why Jesus could look at that crowd and say, you know, in a way, you all sort of fulfill this Old Testament prophecy that some of you, you see me, but you, you don't really perceive what's going on. And some of you, I guess in our, in our modern way of saying it, you hear me, but you're not listening to me. And it's sort of like the crowd is getting divided at this point between those who really get it and those that won't or can't or haven't yet. And you know, in the church today, in anywhere that someone opens the Word of God to share it, it's a very similar situation. Hopefully, the person who is preaching or teaching or sharing or evangelizing is sharing the good word of God, that, it, that the power is in the seed. Everything the seed needs is there. But as it is sown out, there are different reactions. In every hearer, we will all hear it differently. So, <clears throat> let me read the next section. This is Jesus' explanation of the parable. And this will help us discern even more what he is saying us today. So if you have ears to hear, listen to what the Lord says to us today. Matthew 13 continues at verse 18. Um, yes, verse 18. Hear then the parable of the sower. So Jesus is going to dig in and, and, and explain the four types of soils, okay? So listen. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself. Endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit, yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. We should not be surprised that Jesus sets up for his followers that we will have some common enemies. And I think we can see them all, even within this short parable of the four soils. The enemies that we still face today are the world, the flesh, and the devil. And it can be kind of a simplistic way to break things down into categories, but as Jesus explained the soils and the different issues of what attacked the seed or took out the seed, the world, the flesh, the devil, it's all there, isn't it? And if we're going to receive the word, it's because the world, the flesh, and the devil have been dealt with and our hearts are ready to receive. There's a work of the Spirit. Jesus is our King. There's a work that's happened in the good soil. And that's why fruit grows there. So Jesus gives this explanation, kind of the, the allegory of the parables, powerful word images. If you've been around the church for a long time, you've probably heard this parable. You probably have heard of these categories of what Jesus talks about. 
in the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, those are the three that are sort of the same. That's why what synoptic kind of means. It's the same every time. He tells the parable. The disciples ask him for clarification and some questions, and he explains the parable. It happens in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's pretty important if he does it in all three. So there's something about this parable that is kind of a paradigm for us to think about hearing parables or hearing the word or hearing the announced good news of God and his kingdom. So four soils, four types of people, four types of responses. Not the only responses that people can give, but these are pretty relatable categories, aren't there? Aren't they? I bet as you listen to this word, if you're honest and if the spirit is shining kind of a light and letting your eyes see, you can hear a little of yourself in all four soils. I know I can. Both from times before I was with the Lord, from times with the Lord, from times this last week, or sometimes that good seed just did not hit good fertile soil. So I can relate. I hope you can too, and I bet you, I bet you really can. Satan takes the word from some people, and they never really get a chance to hear it. Others take a superficial interest in the word. There's joy at first, but it fades fast. There's no root. Others take in the word, but there's competition in the soil. The word may interest them, but there are other things that are more interesting. And so the word gets choked out. It doesn't bear any fruit. And some truly listen. They believe, they receive the word, and the word bears fruit. So let me walk through these four. I have a, a, a title for each. The first is the path. Um, it is the what you may call a deaf listener. I know that's kind of a weird combination of words, but you have a deaf listener. The second is a superficial listener. The third is a distracted listener. And the fourth is a fruitful listener. Okay, obviously, we want to be the fourth. And we have to work through those other three, don't we? And the Lord has to work in us to get us through those other three categories. So may we be receptive soil today. The first, the description of the seed that hit the path in Matthew 13, 19. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. So this is the path where uh, people have been walking over and over and over, and it's as hard as concrete. And our hearts can be that way. So that the seed, the good seed, hits us and doesn't even have a chance. It hits and bounces right off. And, and to use Jesus' image in the initial parable, it's the good word of God, but it's as good as bird seed. Because it hits, it doesn't get in, and then the birds come along. He says, that's the evil one. It comes along and takes it. It just did not find a home in us. That's a terrible state to be in. And as I said, I know that my heart was that way before I knew the Lord. My heart was not receptive to his word. It was the good word, but I didn't see it as the good word. I could hear it, but I didn't really listen to it. I had flashes of seeing the beauty of it, but not enough to go after it because it was hitting hard soil. There was, no, there was no receptivity in my heart in those days. Now, what I have to be careful of is as a Christian to not let my heart harden in such a way that I'm hardened to the, to the Word of God. Because it can still hit us, can it? Where our, our hearts grow hard against the Word or against the Lord or against the conviction of the Holy Spirit or our Hearts grow hard against love, and a seed is not welcome. Well, we have to be careful. We don't want to be that kind of soil, do we? Because Satan snatches the word away, and it has no effect on us. That should grieve us. It definitely grieves the Lord. So, you know, I, I think about uh, the 21st century that we're living in, how Jesus may come and tell this parable, and how so much of it is so relatable. But then I just think about some of the things going on in our world 
that make this path so hard to get away from for people. I wonder if you can relate to this. We are low on time. We are challenged at every turn in our commitments. We are absolutely inundated with knowledge and images and news and tweets and distractions. And some of us, even before we're awake, we have the attention span of a chipmunk. Thanks, Mom, that was for you. Um, makes this rough path pretty relatable today, doesn't it? There's lots of reasons why the seed would hit and just it just doesn't find a spot. We have to be realistic about this. The worst thing that you can have, I think, in these four soils is a hard heart where the word just gets no chance before it's taken away. So maybe it's that you won't receive the word, maybe it's that you can't receive the word, but let's ask the Lord to break up that stony path and to change us. Don't miss, again, that Jesus is calling for a response to him, his kingdom, his invitation, and his word. And don't forget that we are living in a largely hostile environment as he sows seed into our lives. The word, the flesh, the devil. Don't forget that as we move to the second category. Matthew chapter 13, verses 20 to 21. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word, immediately receives it with joy, and he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. So this is the superficial soil. Um, it's represented by rocky ground, or ground where there's a lot going on, and then there's a little thin layer of soil. So initially it hits, and it begins to grow, and actually appears to have been received there's something starts and something appears and it's like oh wow it's th but but there's no depth there's only superficiality and so the roots can only go so far the test of the rootedness of the fruit is difficulty persecution suffering rejection on account of the word itself so even the places where the word of Jesus comes into your life and you begin to welcome it, but then as you get to know more of it, you realize this is different from how I think. This is different from how I was raised. This is really different from how our world sees things. What you're experiencing there is the heat that comes around this little baby plant. And if the roots can only go so far, it will wither there's just no way to get more resources so it will wither and die and what looks like found a place and grew and yes oh no it didn't persevere there was no rootedness it was a superficial reception of the word can any of you relate to a superficial reception of the word that maybe you got pieces of it into your life and you were all about it until you weren't that there were just things in there that were just too hard or just too uncomfortable or people thought frankly would be weird and so in the limitations of your rootedness you just kind of let it die i've been there if, if you're alive in America in the 21st century, the ethics of Jesus, the morals of Jesus, his view on marriage and sex and family and money. and I mean, you don't have to go far before the heat starts to turn up and you start to go, okay, I, I'm not sure I knew that this is what I was signing up for. If you don't have the roots to get down deep to get those nutrients and and that good water and all that stuff into the system, the heat will take you out. So, superficial, superficial listeners. Let's not be superficial listeners. Money, 
sex, power, idolatry? Are you leaning into the word about those things? Or are you trying to walk out in some shallow ground that lets you kind of be there, but not really? Oh, be careful, my friend. If you have ears to hear, really listen. And some of you, when you feel the heat, and you're feeling the potential for suffering, persecution, rejection, misunderstanding, you need to see that Jesus got it. He had that. As his followers, we certainly will have that where people don't understand. And that heat will rise. But if the roots are dug deep, we can persevere. The third soil The third seed is seed sown among thorns. That comes from Matthew 13, 22. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfaithful. I call these distracted listeners. I think it's a cousin of the superficial because it looks like it's going to make it, but it doesn't. Um, we take interest in the word as long as something more important doesn't enter our sphere. And this is really what the problem is for the distracted listener is um, our values are revealed when shiny objects and new objects and pretty objects and old, familiar, all kinds of different stuff comes around and we're tested and our gaze shifts we are too easily distracted. In Jesus' description, there's temptation that comes from the world. There's temptation that comes from success and wealth. Um, This is consistent with his other teachings where there would be grave warnings about these things. It's not to say you don't live in the world, you don't have a job, you don't pay bills. That's not how he goes at things. He He just warns constantly that the heart is a battleground and work and wealth and success and our identity will constantly, constantly attack at that battleground point of our heart. And isn't that just like Jesus to say, you can, you can only serve one master. It's like you, there can only be one boss of the heart, but you better believe these other things are going to shove in and try to take down the boss. That's the way he talks to us. It's realistic. Does anybody feel that in the 21st century where, where Jesus as the boss of our heart is being tested and attacked and tempted constantly? Maybe even by stuff that's really good things like our family and our dreams for our family and our dreams for our, our plans. and They can be good things, but if, if the heart ground starts to lose out to another Lord, we're losing. We're losing and our soil is distracted. And in the distracted soil, did you hear what happens? It starts to grow, but then something else grows alongside of it. And the picture that Jesus gives of of the thorn, the weed that just kind of slowly grows right around us, might not even realize it's there until, oh, that was a powerful effect. I'm going to lean again. What happens It gets choked out. The weed is stronger than the plant. If they ever take stock of their heart and what it's looking like in terms of their discipleship, their obedience to Jesus, and as they kind of look around the garden a little bit, there's some real strong, vibrant looking weeds and not a ton of good flowers and fruit. That is realistic, isn't it? And Jesus would say that's evidence of a distracted heart. The distracted heart can't receive the word. So, my friends, as I said earlier, living in a 21st century, there are a lot of distractions, aren't there? We live in a world whose values are constantly changing. They either have 
no place for God, or they want us to have a little bit of God and a little bit of everything else. Don't be tempted by that. The economy, inflation, portfolios, um, more information in our hands and in our eyes late at night than, than up until 100 years ago. People didn't have this much information, and you have it right there. don't even have to use your finger. You can say, hey, uh, tell me about... It's very easy to be distracted. Let's be realistic about that, and let's be... Vigilant. There is 24-7 news. There's 24-7 social media. And we live in a world that is preaching other gospels to us all the time. And they may sound like all kinds of different messages, but can I suggest at least a few? And I bet you could have some that, that you can share that I didn't even think of. Here's an American gospel that gets preached to us all day, every day. More, 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 more. New, 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 new. Or how about this one? Me, 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 and me. A little bit of us, mainly me. Anybody susceptible to that kind of stuff? It's in our ears all the time. These are false gospels. And they create competition in the soil of our hearts. Those weeds are strong and they have a purpose. They want more water. They want more sunlight. They want more space. They want more soil. So they're coming after the good stuff. And if you are not careful, the world will choke you out. It will. It's stronger than you. So be careful. And if you have ears to hear, listen. Resist. Destroy. Reject the idols of wealth and power and status and Anxiety and control and pleasure and platform and sexual exploit. Idols, idols, weeds, constantly trying to choke out the Word of God. Let's be careful. Let's be careful. Matthew 13, 23. As for what was sown in good soil, this is the one who hears the word, understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another 60, and in another 30. Fruitful listeners. The word is heard, welcomed, it's received, it has time and resources to get rooted. The fruit on one hand is natural, on another hand it's totally supernatural. You can't make it happen. God has to make it happen. The fruit of good works, the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the life of the Spirit in us, the fruit of godliness, the fruit of Christ-likeness, it's natural, but it's supernatural. But when it's in good soil and everything's going the way it's supposed to go, we will be fruitful. It might shoot up quickly. Good for them. It might go real slow. You guys remember, maybe this is this is just my generation in school, but you remember taking little Dixie cups and at the very beginning of the year you'd throw a little dirt in there and drop a little sunflower seed or, or that was probably too expensive, a marigold, right? And you sit them on a tray and sit them over by the, by the window and every day, as cool as I thought I was, I was like, I don't care about that. Is my flower growing yet? I mean, I was like totally committed and I was over there watching, and I can remember being one that, that it took a little bit for that little, for that little guy to break through the soil. But then when he did, I was like, yes, I am basically a gardener. I mean, it was like, yeah. 
I probably thought it was going to grow something I could eat. So to be honest with you, I was very confused. Very, very confused. But even in that little Dixie cup, stuff grows at a different pace, doesn't it? But it's growing because it's not about the little flower or the plant. It's about the power that's embedded in that seed. The seed has everything that it needs for life. But it can't just sit in a bag or in a package. It has to be sown into the ground, right? And then this natural but magical combination of air and sunlight and warmth and water and life that's embedded within the seed bursts forth. What a picture. Jesus is a pretty good storyteller, isn't he? Good seed, good soil, yields good fruit. So I won't go to the 21st century. I'll just go right into your business and mine and just say, do you see fruit in your life? Do you see fruit? Do you see that the rootedness of the word is bearing fruit in your life in what may seem like natural ways, but what is really supernatural with the spirits at work and He's bearing the fruit of the kingdom and the fruit of Christ in you. And what about in our church, my friends? Do we see fruit growing here and there? Maybe not shooting right up, but it better be there. Evidence of life. So we interpret the parable. Really, Jesus interpreted the parable. But now our work as good listeners is to let the parable interpret us. I bet today and in this week, the seed from today is going to have some competition. There's going to be some stuff that goes after it. There will be some birds fluttering around trying to take it away. You guard that seed and you guard that soil and have the greater vision for kingdom fruit in your life. Kingdom fruit grown here in our church. So do you hear what Jesus is saying? Do you have ears to hear him? What kind of soil are you? What's the state of your heart? What kind of listener are you? How would you label yourself today? How would the people that really, really know you and know your life, how would they label you today? If you are deaf, Jesus offered healing that we could hear. He heals ears, mouths, eyes, hearts. If you find yourself in a place where you are superficial, lean into Jesus and pray, take me deeper. Take me deeper. Bring seriousness and substance. Make, make me rooted. Make me resilient. If you are distracted, and who's not, Jesus, bring clarity. Bring us focus on you and on the kingdom. And Lord, help us develop boundaries to drown out this really loud and aggressive world. Oh, help us, Lord. And if you are a little bit of them all, like Pastor Jason surely is, let's ask Jesus to make us fruitful, to direct us to good places, to give us everything we need so that we can grow. Let's pray for that. Heavenly Father, we see the beautiful story that Jesus tells us. We see the the wonder of this parable. And we want our hearts to be yours. We want to be receptive to your word. We want to be fruitful for you. So, O King Jesus, have your way with our hearts this morning in this first parable of chapter 13. And Lord, I know you're doing something as you stir us up. You've certainly been stirring me and Dave and Caleb as we prepare to preach these passages. You are at work in our church. And so as you unfold more and more about the kingdom in these stories, let us be healed. Let us be good listeners. 
Let our hearts be good soil. And may we bear good fruit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.